In an earlier lecture, we spoke about the photohalogenation reaction, and we said that if we begin with isobutane and we add chlorine halogen in the presence of a light source, we produce the following two combination of products. We produce about 35% of tert-butyl chloride and 65% of our isobutyl chloride. Now, what happens if we replace our chlorine halogen with a bromine halogen? What will be the combination of these two products? Well, it turns out that about 100% all of our products will be in the tert-butyl bromide form and not about 0% will be in the isobutyl bromide form. Once again, if we use bromine instead of chlorine in our photohalogenation reaction, our bromine will be much more selective in choosing which H atom it decides to abstract. So the bromine will be more likely to abstract our tertiary H than our primary H. So, why is this the case? Well, to answer this question, we have to recall what the Hammond postulate is. The Hammond postulate states that for an endothermic reaction, our transition state will resemble the products. But how exactly does this explain the selectivity of bromine compared to chlorine or bromide compared to chloride radical? Well, to answer that question, let's examine our propagation steps of these two radical reactions. So let's suppose our initiation step takes place. In other words, we add the light source and both of these a halogens, the chlorine halogen and bromine halogen dissociate forming two chain carrying radicals. So let's look at the propagation step of photochlorination. So here we have our starting material, the isobutane, and here we have the chain carrying radical, the chloride radical. So this is our transition state and this is a one step mechanism. So what happens is this chlorine molecule interacts with this H, abstracting that H, forming the following CLH bond. And this is our radical formed. So, now, this step, the first step of the propagation step in photochlorination, is slightly endothermic. And that means because it's only slightly endothermic, our transition state structure will resemble that of our starting materials and our uh, final product. So it will be somewhere in between. So if we examine our transition state, these two partially formed bond and partially broken bond will be at about the same stage. Once again, the first step is only slightly endothermic, therefore the partially formed transition bonds and the partially broken transition bonds will be equidistant. Now, let's compare that to the propagation step of photobromination. Now, in photobromination, we have the same type of reaction taking place. This bromine abstracts this H, forming the HBr bond and this radical. So, the same two radicals, but different hydrogen, uh, hydrogen halides. So, let's examine our transition state. Notice that this reaction is much more endothermic than this reaction. In fact, this is so much more endothermic that if we examine our transition state, we see that this HBr bond is much more formed and this CH bond is much more broken. So, the first step is much more endothermic. Hence, the partial bond between HBr will be much more formed than the partial bond between HCl. So that means because this reaction is more endothermic, our transition structure will resemble this radical or partially developed radical will, will resemble our product. So what does that mean about our selectivity? Well, because this partially formed radical is much more formed in this transition state than this transition state, 
the difference in stability will play a much larger role in the photobromination than photochlorination. So once again, what do we conclude? For photobromination, differences in radical stability will be much more important, making bromine much more selective. In other words, the reason the bromine will not want to take away the H atom from our primary carbon position is because if this is the case, if the bromine does choose to take away the H from the primary carbon position, the partially formed radical will be very, very unstable compared to this more stable case. And so the other case where bromine abstracts the H from the primary will not take place. This will be the only one that will take place because it's much more stable.